Hi, today we're going to be having a bit of a look at creating this vaporwave effect, which I thought would be really fun to make. And also it gives us a chance to practice our skills in Illustrator. So I'm just going to hop on over to a new document I've got here. I've just set up a new document. It's an A4 landscape. I'm also going to talk through the panels I've got. So I've got my layers open here. I've got my stroke panel, my gradient panel, my swatches and my pathfinder. That's mainly what I'll be using and um, a bit of character as well. So we're going to start with the background. And I'm just going to name my layers as I go so I know what I'm working on. So this one's going to be the background. And on here I'm going to create two rectangles. So I go over to my tool here that creates shapes. I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and click and drag out a rectangle that will just hang over the edge of my artboard. Now at the moment it's um, white but I want this to be this sort of um, dark blue here. I've got my first um, shape there and I've got it selected. I'm actually going to copy and paste that in front. So how I do that is I command C and command F and I get the exact same shape sitting on the one that's below it. And I can see that here if I drop out my layers panel here, I've got two rectangles. And I've got the top one selected at the moment. I just want to remove the stroke here and I'm just working on the fill. And I want it to be this super soft black gradient here. I'm going to have a bit of a play around with this. So remove this middle channel. I'm just going to move this channel down to the base. Now it's good, it's got the opacity of zero, that's what I want. Uh, and this opacity up here, I'm going to knock that back. Let's try 60 and put it back up to 70. Yeah, I think that's looking how I want it to. Now I've got to take this a step further because I actually want to um, blend this a bit with the background. And how I'm going to do that is I also need to open up my transparency panel. So that's under window transparency. So I'll bring that up there and I'll just dock it over here as well. Uh, and I want to take it from this normal blending mode and I want to change it to multiply. The next step that I'd like to do is I'm going to go to my eraser tool over here. At the moment my eraser is huge so I'm going to use my square bracket keys and they're on my keyboard and when I use those it makes uh, my brush size or my eraser size bigger and smaller. So I'm going to take this down and I'm going to create sort of some star kind of shapes by cutting it out of this gradient that's sitting here on top. So maybe I'm going to do a few this sort of size. I'm just going to sort of plop them around the space, mainly in these top two thirds. Make it a bit smaller, put a few more in. Now I'm just clicking once, I'm not sort of dragging it because I want this to keep the round shape of the um, eraser brush. And down again, I'll just put a few more in. There we go, drop those in, maybe a couple at the top. Great, it's just kind of random. Looking good. Now when I click off that, you can kind of see um, straight through to the background but it's a little bit too clean cut for me so I'm going to add an effect to this top shape and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to effect and stylize and what I want to do is feather I'll take it down and click on preview so you can see what we're doing all right, I might go to two mil yeah looks good all right happy with that fantastic so that's my background done and I'm going to lock that now by clicking on the toggle lock and I'll collapse that and add a new layer. Now this layer is going to be a sun and a grid. So I'll type that in there so I know what I'm working on. Might do, hmm, I'll do the sun first. So the sun is a basic shape that's the uh, ellipse tool here. And I need to hold down shift as I click and drag uh, my shape. Um, and it's going to take on the attributes of the last shape that I made, which is this gradient. So we're not actually using this gradient this time around. We're going to create our own custom gradient. I'm just going to click and drag that a bit more until I'm happy with the size. Cool, that looks good. All right, so because it's already got a gradient applied to it, I can actually just adjust the gradient to make my own gradient. But if you had um, just a solid color, I don't mind actually just going to this gradient and then adjusting it from there. That's quite an easy way to get into it. So this one's going to be a linear gradient. So I'm going to check um, linear gradient box up here and I want to change the angle to 90. That's actually just going to mean that um, it's running the way that I want it to. But these aren't the colors that I want it to be. I want it to be a sun. I want it to be really vibrant. So I'm going to change this around a bit. I'm going to remove this channel and select this one. I want this opacity to be at 100. I'm going to slide that down and I'm going to, I'm going to select pink for that one. And I'm going to select orange. For this one that's not quite the orange I want maybe this orange yeah that looks good I might even just slide this up a little bit yeah fantastic but I would like to put some lines through this sun the way that I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to go to my line tool and I'm going to click and drag while I hold down shift 
sort of around the middle. I might kind of do it probably a little bit lower than that. And it can hang over the edge. That's good because we're actually going to use our pathfinder to sort of cookie cut a hole in the sun. So I've got my first stroke there. I'm just going to add a bit of weight to it so I can see it. And I'm going to make it white so I can see what I'm working on. A bit bigger. Here we go. Excellent. Okay. Now, to make several lines going down here, there are a few ways I could copy and paste and click and drag. What I really like to do is hold down the option key and you can see that I have my black cursor and then underneath is a white cursor. If I'm holding down option, I can actually click that line and drag and it'll pull out a second instance of that line, which is great. Now I want to continue that down the page and I could just um, hold down option again and click and drag and try and get the same spacing. Well, there's actually a shortcut which I use a lot which um, really helps with the workflow and that is command T. And that just repeats the same action that you just performed before. So now I have a whole bunch of lines. They're all equally spaced. It was really quick and easy to do. And I'm going to start changing the stroke size. So I'll leave this first one as two points or four points it was. I'll add a bit of weight to this one. Here we go. Keep going a bit bigger each time. These are starting to get quite thick. So I'm actually going to delete these two. And because I've got my background locked, I can actually just run my cursor over those. And I'm just going to stretch these down. It's probably the easiest way of doing it until you're kind of wanting to visualize these gaps in the middle. Ignore the white lines and just kind of get a feel for what the sun will look like. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so what I need to do now is to select those lines. At the moment, they're just strokes. They're not shapes and to be able to do the next step i need to turn them into a shape rather than a stroke so what i need to do next is go up to object to path and to outline stroke and what that's done is change all of those strokes into shapes um, which means i can go to the next step so i have those selected already i'm going to hold down shift and select the sun behind now i have all of the shapes on that layer selected and i'm going to go to my pathfinder and use this option here which is called trim uh, you can try some of the other options and see how that's sort of different. You can do minus front and other things. The reason why I've chosen trim is I want to keep my gradient the same. So some of those options will mean that the gradient will go from pink to orange there and in this shape pink to orange, pink to orange, pink to orange. But I actually want it to just be pink to orange over the whole shape. What it's done is it's uh, now cut a hole in the shape behind, but I've still got these white shapes that I actually don't want to keep anymore. So I need to remove them. Uh, what it also does when you use the pathfinder is group all of the shapes together. I'll just show you. So if I click off that and then I click back on, it will select all the shapes. So what I can do to go inside that group is to double click on it or I could right mouse button click and ungroup. What I'm going to do is double click, go into the group and I can select those white lines and hit delete. And now you can see what I was talking about before is I've got my sun and it's got these gradual lines going through it, getting larger and larger as it goes down to the base of the sun. I can just double click on my artboard and I go back to my original view. So this is looking pretty funky. I'm pretty happy with that so far. The next thing that I'd like to do is create a grid. And the way that I'm going to do that in this tutorial is, I'll just zoom out a little bit so I've got a bit more space, is with the blend tool. I've got my line tool again. I'm going to click and drag. We'll start with 45 degrees. We can always change that later. Um, and I'm going to add, let's just add it as a white line for now. And again on the other side. So with those two selected, I'm going to create a blend between them. And what that's going to do is Adobe Illustrator is going to create a whole bunch of lines for me um, to blend these two lines together. So I'm going to go up to Object and to Blend. And I want to go to Blend Options. And I'll select this. Now, I've just been in here before, so I've already got specified steps, which is the one I want to go to. So specified steps. And I've got 10 in here. I think I probably want a few more. So I'm going to click 20 and we'll see how it looks. We can always come back in and... Um, see if it's right. So I'll click OK and then I need to go back to Object, Blend, Make. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with those. I think they're fairly well spaced. You could put more or less in depending on your preference. Uh, but I don't think the angle is severe enough. So I'm actually going to just zoom out a little bit and show you how we can keep working on this blend. I'm going to go to my Direct Selection tool and grab this bottom anchor and just drag it out. Make it, it'll see how it's just dragging these shapes out, uh, these lines out. I'll do the same on the other side. Bring it in a bit. A bit more on the other side. Yeah, so that's sort of starting to get a bit of a nice perspective on it.
Now we've got these vertical lines, we're going to do the horizontal next. So same deal as before, this time I'm going to hold down shift as I drag because I want it to be a nice straight line. So I've got my horizontal line in there and I'm going to click and again hold down option and drag it down to the bottom of the grid. Now it doesn't need to go all the way across because it's just going to um, be within our artboard so that's fine. Now with these two selected, I don't want to have 20 in between them, I think that that would make um, it just too busy. So I'm going to go back up to object to blend blend options and I'm going to step this back, I might make it 8 and see how that looks. Click OK, back up to object, blend, make, or you can use the keyboard shortcuts if you like. Yeah cool, okay, so that's actually still probably more than I want, but I'm just, instead of going back in and making a new blend, I'm just going to drag that a bit up. And I'm pretty happy with that. So if we go in a little bit closer, whoop, too far, <laughs> we can see uh, what's happening with our space. Uh, so what I'd like to do is I'm going to blend orange to pink this way, uh, and we'll do that first. So I'm going to select with my direct selection tool this line, and I'm going to use the same colours that I have in the sun. So I think that was this one, and on this side we had this pink. So you can see how it blends the shape of the line or the direction of the line. It also blends colour, so that looks pretty funky. And I'm going to do these ones with a gradient. And I'm going to have the gradient the same as the sun, so it'll go orange through to pink. So I'm actually going to use my eyedropper here and select the sun. And you'll see it's actually made the fill colour that. So I'm going to just flip it around um, and we have a look at that. Yep, it's going from orange to pink. I'm just going to deselect that now. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, but the lines are a little bit thin, so I might just bump them up a bit. Select both of them, over to my stroke tool here, uh, stroke panel. Great. All right. So I feel like we've got our grid happening, we've got our sun happening. I'd like to add a bit of a glow to the sun, and I might even add it to the grid too. We'll see. I'll select the sun now, and I'm going to add an effect. So off to effect and stylize, and I'm going to do outer glow. See how that looks. Now I don't want too much of a glow, like it just needs to be subtle. So I was actually quite happy with that um, 2 mil blur and I'll click OK. So while we're at it, we might just see what it looks like when we put it on these blends. It might might not work, might not kind of look quite right, but we'll, we'll have a bit of a go. So we'll do an outer glow here as well. And hit preview. Maybe bump it up a little bit. Hmm. Maybe try this and see what this one looks like. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm liking that. It's, all right, so I think that's pretty pretty right. I might just make this sun a little bit bigger. I'm going to hit Shift and Option as I drag, and it'll expand it just from the center. I think we're going to lock that now because we're done with that layer. And we'll add on the top layer. This is going to be our typography layer. So I'm going to grab my type tool over here and draw myself a text box. And I was working with this type before, so I'm working with this typeface here, Asylum, and at 150 points. Now the other thing about this typeface, which it, it's kept um, my work from before, uh, is it's, it's got a weird tracking. So I've actually adjusted that here and I've, I've changed the tracking to minus 75 just so it's kind of a little bit um, tighter and closer together, which is the look that I'm going for. So I'm actually wanting to add gradient to this word. What I need to do for that is I'm going to actually expand my type. So I'm going to go to type and create outlines, which is this one here, or you can use the shortcut. And what that does is it actually just makes them all into vector shapes. What I'll do first is I'm just going to add that same gradient that I you know, often go to and then adjust from there. So it's just the one that's the standard one in the swatches panel. Uh, I'd like this to be a linear gradient as well, and I'm going to select it as 90. I'm going to change these channels. So I'm going to double click on the first one, and I want this to be pink. I want it this pink. And I also want it to be 100%. Uh, and I want that to be right down the bottom. All right, excellent. Next one, also 100%. And I want this one to be purple. Yeah, that looks kind of funky. Let's go with that. And that's going to kind of go just into the middle here of the slider. Next one, I need a fourth one. Now I'm just going to hover over and see where that plus comes up and I'm going to click it. This one's going to be white and it also needs to be at 100%. And I want to pull this slider right down so it's just sitting right with this purple one because I want this line in the middle of the type to be quite strong. Now you could play around here like you could move this and move the other one up until it's sort of sitting 
maybe at the top of the X height or something like that. Um, and you can spend a bit more time with it. But um, for the sake of moving on, I'll just leave it as it is for now. But please do, you know, have a play with that and get it just exactly how you want it to look. Uh, now this top one that at the moment is black, I would like to change that to blue. Maybe dark blue. Yeah, pretty happy with that. That's looking good. Cool. All right. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, but at the moment, it sort of feels like it's blending in a little bit to the background. So I'm going to add a white stroke. So to do that, I go over to my swatches panel. At the moment, you can see that I'm working on the fill because that's sitting on top. So I want to click this stroke behind and hit the white. Uh, yeah, look, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think I want it to have too much stroke. Actually, no, I kind of like that. Yeah, I think I like it with a bit, bit more of a stroke. Okay. And I also want this to have a bit of a glow, I think. Um, so I'm just going to move that over a bit. I'm going to go up to Effect, to Stylize and Outer Glow. We'll hit Preview and see how it's looking. It's probably looking a little bit too glowy, so I'm going to just knock that back. I just want it to be subtle, so it looks like it's kind of sitting on the top a bit. Excellent. That looks great. Okay, fantastic. Last step. Very exciting. All right, so we're going to go back over to our Type Tool. Um, and I'm going to click and drag myself a text box here. Then we're going to write 20... 19 and hit all because at the moment it's still got the characteristics of the last type that I used and this time I want to use one called brush script here we go brush script we'll take it down to 72 we'll just bump it up from there oh and it's a little bit compacted because you can see here that's taking on um, this tracking from before so let's just go back to zero and that's a pretty good size. I'm pretty happy with that. And I want this to be white. So I'm going to go to my fill, click white. Um, and I want this to be on a bit of a jaunty angle. Like so. And I'm just sort of going to lay it slightly mm, over the top here. Like that. Cool. All right. Now, this is where you can kind of go in and start adjusting things how you'd like to. There are a couple of things that I might do now. I might just move this down a bit. Uh, I'm not really happy with this blue, so I might change that and make it a bit brighter. Maybe I'll use... Mm, no. Yep. Go with that one. Change this color out a bit. Yep. Good. Even make this text a bit bigger. Yep. There we go. Great. I also feel like this um, grid isn't really popping. So I'm going to click the toggle on here and go back to my sun slash grid area. And I'm going to select those two blends and just make the lines a bit bigger. Yeah, it's maybe too big. Let's go three points. Nice. Excellent. So we have finished our Vaporwave style image. I hope you enjoyed having a play with the blend tool, having a play with some gradients and some typography. I'll see you next time.